Now we can actually apply Schrodinger's equation to a hydrogen atom. So a hydrogen atom essentially consists of a proton, which is a positive charge creating an electric potential. We can write the electric potential energy as U of R is equal to minus E squared over 4 pi epsilon naught R. And around that potential, that proton, we have got an electron. Now, this is a bit more complicated than our infinite or finite potential well. For a start, an atom is a three-dimensional object, whereas our potential wells we were just considering in one dimension. The atom is like a finite potential well because it's possible for the electrons to escape from the atom. And what makes it even more complicated is that we don't have a well-defined wall height here because as you can see from the potential function, the potential depends on R. However, it is possible to solve Schrodinger's equation for an atom. And if we do solve it, what we find is that the energy of the states is given by the equation En is equal to minus Me to the 4 over 8 epsilon naught squared h squared times 1 on n squared, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. So hopefully that's slightly familiar to you, as this is what Bohr said the energy of the electrons in the hydrogen atom was as well. However, Bohr got there through pure luck and coincidence, whereas the Schrodinger equation describes what really happens. Now, because these energy levels are the same as what we found in the Bohr model, what we were looking at before for the transitions inside the hydrogen atom, where we could have electrons transitioning from excited states down to the ground state in the Lyman series, or from excited states down to the n equals 2, the first excited level in the Barmer series. This is all still true because the energy differences are exactly the same. Now, as well as giving an energy, Schrodinger's equation lets us calculate a wave function that describes each of the states that an electron can be in. So each of those allowed states has a certain wave function which can de be described by three quantum numbers. So the three quantum numbers are n, the principal quantum number, which is associated with the energy of the state through the energy equation that we've just seen. Now there's also a quantum number given the symbol L, which is known as the orbital quantum number. And this is associated with the angular momentum of the electron in that state. And the orbital quantum number can have values L equals zero all the way up as integers to L is equal to n minus one. The final quantum number is known as the orbital magnetic quantum number. This is basically related to the orientation of the orbital quantum number. So sometimes it's called the projection of the orbital quantum number. Now this one has more values. It can go from ML is equal to minus L through all the integers through zero up to ML is equal to L. Now this leads us to one of the differences for the predictions of the Bohr model compared to using Schrodinger's equation. With the Bohr model, the angular momentum of the state was given by n h bar. So for the ground state with n equals one, we predicted that the ground state electron would have angular momentum. With Schrodinger's equation, the ground state electron with n equals one has L equal to zero. And so the angular momentum in this case is equal to zero. So according to Schrodinger's equation, our ground state electron doesn't have any angular momentum, which is in fact what people have found to be true.